Okay. All right. So welcome everybody. Uh, please be aware we're recording that this this webinar. It, and as it's recorded, we place it, the webinar, on our YouTube page. So if you want the link, you can ask for it later. I'm also going to send you a copy of the presentation in a PDF format, all right? I did put in the chat box our webpage. That's the link to overall link to our overall webpage. And so please feel free to take a snip of that or write it down, um, because that's where you can find a lot of information. I want to say thank you for taking the time to be with us this evening and allowing us to present information about Central Coast Community Energy. My name is Susan Davison and I'm a commercial key account specialist and the point of contact at Central Coast Community Energy. Um, since that's such a mouthful, we also call ourselves CCCE. Um, sometimes you see 3CE also is our name. Who are we? We're actually a public agency and our role is to provide electricity into the Central Coast. And we partner with both PG&E and with Edison to, to provide this service. So they are our partners, PG&E and Edison for the grid, the meters, the billing, and we provide the energy into that system um, that actually comes to your house or your business. I look forward to sharing our organization with you today, and I look forward to the questions. We will have a Q&A session at the end, so please save. You, um, oh. I'm, am I getting cut off? Okay, let's see if I can adjust my camera. Uh, Joseph, does that help a little bit? Let me try that. Does that help a little bit better? Okay, there, I, I keep getting cut off at the neck, I think, here. So thank you for letting me know that. Appreciate it. All right. Let me share screen, okay? So that way you can actually see what I'm talking about. All right. So can you see this, this screen on the left? All right. I think you can see it. Thank you, Robert, appreciate it. Like I said, it's, it's fun to actually be the one in charge and have all this stuff going on. So, if I'm a little slow on the uptake, please be patient with me, okay? Because I can actually see stuff in the chat box. <clears throat> All right, so this is who we are. And here's our agenda for tonight. Um, Central Coast Community Energy, CCCE, is a locally controlled public agency. Um, we actually, that provide community aggregation. So it's called the CCA, C, CCA, Community Choice Aggregation was the legislation that created it. It's the ability to take electricity and purchase that power. This service is known as a CCA. Um, they're across the nation. Most people don't know that. California is not the only state that has them. Other states do have CCAs, and, but California has a really active CCAs. And so as a, a CCA, we pro procure power from clean and renewable resources on behalf of communities such as the city of Buellton, the businesses and residences there, and that want local control over electricity sources and prices. And so tonight I'm gonna to share with you how, how we work with Pacific Gas and Electric and what you can expect from us as your community, as your community, the city of Buellton enrolls with our organization. I'll discuss the resources available to you as a customer, and I'm gonna cover some of our frequently asked questions. I've allocated plenty of time at the end to answer your additional questions. So please be mindful of everyone's time. Um, you can use the chat feature, okay, um, to ask the questions. If you use the q and I won't be able to see it during the presentation. So feel free to use the chat feature, all right? Just remember it's public and we appreciate it. So um, we will save the Q&A questions quite a bit to the end of the presentation because I think you're gonna have a few of them. All right, so these are some of the frequently asked questions we actually want to answer. Is my billing bill going to increase? No. Will my service with PG&E be discontinued? No, we partner with PG&E. Will I lose my PG&E discounts like my medical baseline or my Karen Fira? No. Will I receive two bills? No, you'll still get one bill. Um, do I have to decide today? No. Do I have the ability to choose? Yes. That's what CCA is, the ability to actually choose 
either pg e and both of us to provide your energy. So we're going to address the questions this evening. Um, I'm not going to contrast pg and Edison. Um, mostly the slides in here, well, let me put it this way, OK? In the Q&A session, if you want to ask some questions about Edison, and um, because that's a, that's a great clarity, all right? Um, Edison is each, each utility, pg e Edison, and sdg e are very unique. We call them IOUs, investor-owned utilities, and each one sets their own rates and sets their own rules. And so pg e has a huge territory, and they're very, very different than Edison. Edison is much more, I would say, competitive in some ways, um, and much more, a little less flexible, I guess I would say. Um, if they set a date, they hold to the date. Um, so again, they act very differently, but there are partners. Um, you will still see your energy show up in the Edison bill or the pg e bill. Tonight's presentation will actually have pg e examples in it, but think about it the same way as if you're getting your Edison bill. You're still going to get one bill. And what happens is, is that bill, you'll get an extra page in the bill per meter that shows It'll show what your Edison costs are. We call it bundled services, all right? Um, and so if in the bundled services, you that means like Edison provides everything in that bundle, or you actually then, when, they, when our bill comes into the page, you actually have one more page that says Central Coast Community Energy, and you get to see what the costs are. So the goal for us as a CCA is to be much more transparent um, so you can actually understand um, what, how much it costs for things, and you can start seeing to unfold your bill. So um, we have another question. Is, the, is this only for built-in customers? The answer is no. Um, the focus tonight will uh, be, be a bit on pg e but like I said, ask your questions at the end on Edison, because I actually provide service. I'm the key account person and the commercial person for both pg e and for Edison, so I can answer the questions on both sides. So now if you um, actually are in, let's say you're in Goleta, you're being served by Edison, um, or you're in the city of Buellton where you're gonna be served by pg and &E, it's quite the same system where we show up in the bill for each one of them. So when Buellton, pg and &E provides the billing for us in, in Goleta, Edison provides the billing for us. And we have reps and we have weekly meetings with both of those utilities. So we, we are very clear and aware of what's happening. We partner well together. So great questions, okay? Lots of stuff. All right, next. Um, we formerly were known as Monterey Bay Community Power, um, but as we moved across the Central Coast, we now are finished with that expansion. So we're from San Benito, Santa Cruz, Monterey Bay, San Luis Obispo, and Santa Barbara counties. And so that's why we're called Central Coast. And so we have almost every city and county in that bucket that we serve, um, but we're not moving any bigger, okay? And so that's some people would know us as Monterey Bay, or sometimes when you're typing in the internet, you'll actually see Monterey Bay, but it's the same as us. We just changed our name. All right, so what about CCAs? Did you know that 11 million customers in, in California are served by CCAs? And in fact, in during this year, about 50% of the customers will actually be served by a CCA. And the reason is, is the local communities want to have a choice about the where the energy is purchased. And then the benefits, the revenue that's crafted that when you pay your energy bill comes back into the local community. And so our goal is to be transparent and have equity, choice, and renewable energy. And we want to be a positive force. So 200, more than 200 communities in the state of California have always already asked and are currently participating in CCAs. So this is not going away. All right. So our mission as a CCA, you'll find it on our website, is to support and provide residents with more energy options, ensure local transparency and accountability, and actually drive economic benefits and development to injured community. So how are we started? Um, the legislation was actually in 2002. It actually took almost eight years for the first CCA to get formed and started. And that began in, that began in Marin County in 2010. 
And what happens is, is we then from 2010 until now, you see the expansion and the success of the CCAs because the intent is the money stays local. We actually make sure that we purchase local. Um, we're paying very close attention of how we get our energy. So we'll talk a little bit about more about that today. And you as potentially as NAM customers, as some of you or all of you are, have been paying attention to this market for a while. So you are early adopters in this market. So we actually, as a CCA in our mission statement, we actually promote long-term electric rate stability and energy security while reducing the reliance on fossil fuels and stimulating our local economy. So that's actually our focus. So this is how a CCA works. Um, we offer the opportunity for a community to join. Um, we buy the power just like the utilities. Most people don't know there are 2,200 power providers in the state of California that you can buy from and the utilities buy from. So we're all in the same market. Um, we buy power for our rate payers, and then we actually, it's delivered over the existing lines, pg and &E or Edison lines, as a competitive alternative to your local utility. So a city or county joins us to gain more control and actually provide the benefits back into their community. So we procure the energy, it's delivered over Edison or pg and &E lines to your house, to you, the customers. And this is all done in partnership with both the, with the utilities. So as a CCA, we are a um, public agency. We're governed by local leaders across the Central Coast. And so the revenue generated by us actually stays local and helps. And our goal is to keep electricity rates lower. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about how we do that versus, and we also fund energy programs. So here's an example of the governance structure. So cities of 50,000 or less have a shared seat and they work out how they share that seat. Those above actually have a seat and we have both a policy board and an operation board. The policy board makes organizational decisions and they're made, that's made up of elected officials. The operations board is actually focused on the financial and legal sides and it's only made up of city and county administrators who deal with the financial. We also have a third board called the Community Advisory Council, which you have, can happily participate uh, um, actually and see if you could join. It's made up of local volunteers who wanna make an impact in the communities that we serve. In accordance with the Brown Act, all of our meetings and documents are public and we encourage you to participate. So now what I'm going to do is when you, uh, earlier I had put our 3CE webpage, right? We're gonna put it here again. This is our website. When you look at the website, at the top right-hand corner, you will find the meetings and agendas. And you click on that, and that brings up both the policy and the operations board meetings, as well as the CAC. And you can watch them being recorded. We have one tomorrow. So Brown Act, all everything is public. We post our budget there. We post our rates there. So we're very, very transparent in how you actually can go find information. If you can't find a piece of information, you're able to email us and reach and we respond back and tell you where it is or share it with you. <clears throat> so who are we uh, and why, why, why do I am proud about the benefit of being able to work with CCCE? Um, so what can you expect from us? We're the first CCA in California to, re to get a S&P financial A rating. Um, four other CCAs in California had gotten the rating. We're the first ones to get the A rating. So we're really proud of that. When we started in 2018, which wasn't a long time ago, we started with a $5 million loan from, from, that was the startup funding. This loan was paid back in the first six months. Our CEO is exceptionally fiscally responsible. And as a public agency, we don't pay shareholders or anything. You actually can see our budgets and the money comes, it goes back into rate reductions, rate protection for our customers and our energy programs, which we'll talk about later in the presentation. So you'll see how our money stays within your organization and moves back into the local communities. We actually procure energy contracts at very competitive rates. In fact, the gentleman who runs our power procurement department worked for PG&E and signed some of the first renewable contracts in the state of California for PG&E. So he's, he knows his stuff. And what the other thing that we're very proud of is, is, is 
just in the last few years, our customers save more than $50 million just in bill savings because we take, we've been taking the IOU rate that PG&E would charge, and then we discount it. So, the, so your business, your home, your city actually gets that discounted rate. And that's part of actually how we actually work with the community. So your choices, there's two choices, okay? Um, whoops, that's the next page. We'll talk about this one first. Part of our goal is to be as clean and renewable as possible. And so our board had voted to actually say by 2025, five years ahead of the state and all the other IOUs to be 60% clean and renewable. Those contracts are signed and in place. We do not build um, uh, actual renewable projects. We, they're built by, different, by one of those 2200 agencies or uh, entities. And then we actually purchase from them with long-term contracts, 15, 20, 30 year contracts for that power. So we know where our power is coming from. Our board also voted to be 100% renewable by 2030. And so that's what the team is now, the procurement team is now looking at that to actually continue to work in that direction. You as NEM customers are early adopters, understand the benefits of, of actually having renewables and how you can move that into your, you know, paying your energy bill and what that does for you. All right, so our, 100% clean, clean pathway includes solar, wind, geothermal, small hydro, and biomass projects. And we issue something called a PCL, power content label. Each utility and CCA issues that. They're usually a year behind, so the current PCL is actually 2020. You can type that into our website. You can go find that, and you actually can see what PG&E, how they buy their power, you can see how our power is procured. And so those, those documents are sent to the uh, Public Utilities Commission and approved, and then they become public. So we get to share them um, as public documents. So what are my choices? As a customer, whether you are residential, industrial, commercial, or a city, um, your default offering or the primary offering is 3C choice which is discounted off of PG&E or Edison rates, okay? Then we also offer a 3C prime. So some customers, and especially some of the customers, like in Santa Maria, I've got a big customer whose parent is French. And so they're really careful and aware of their GHG reduction. And so they're actually participating in what's called 3C prime. And so 3C prime is called an adder, which means that it's 100% renewable, all right, and wind and, and, um, and solar, nothing else, no nuclear, no coal, no, no gas, nothing buried in there. And it's an adder. So let's say you're, so each meter, let's get into the details here. Each meter that serves your property or your business has a rate, it's called a rate tariff. That rate tariff is established by the utility, PG&E or Edison, not by us. That rate tariff is determined by how much energy you use. And so over time, if you use more or less energy, your rate can change. So that rate tariff is different than your NEM. Your NEM is a um, renewable on top of that or that surrounds that about how you get your energy. But the rate tariff is actually the number. And A10, um, the big customers are like B19s and 20s. On your bill, if you flip through your bill, you'll be able to find that. It's usually at the top, right around your address. On the PG&E bill, the Edison bill, it says A10, B5, B6, that kind of stuff. And so that rate tariff is established. If your rate is six cents a kilowatt hour, then what happens is, is if you went from the regular rate to being 100% renewable, it would be 6.008. Okay, so it's a, so it'd be 0 0.068. So that's how the adder is added. So it depends on your rate, the adder gets rate added to that. That was a little bit more information probably than you wanted to know, but, but what I do know is most of our customers, um, especially our NEM customers, 95% of our NEM customers actually um, use more energy than they generate. So the 5% that are what called, they call, were called over generators is a small percentage, almost everybody else uses it. And as a renewable customer, you're tied to the grid. 
you're mandatorily tied to the grid by the utility and the state. And so you're using energy no matter what. So this allows you to actually determine, even if I couldn't afford solar for my house, I could actually that still actually get the 100% renewable for my house. All right, so enrollment. Um, Robert asked earlier about enrollment. So this is the time for enrollment. What happens is, is two months before we start reaching out, enrollment actually occurs in a specific month. So January 2022 is enrollment for, for the NAM customers down south, unincorporated Santa Barbara, Goleta, Carbonderia, all the NEM customers, and then also for the whole city of Buellton, regular customers and NEM customers, okay? So the process starts in November with notifications of who we are, what our services are, and what we provide. Most of us don't pay attention to what shows up on our bills, but we have been notifying you. And enrollment continues for two more months. So this is the important part, okay? You have a choice to stay with us. Okay, 95, actually 96, 97% of our customers stay with us because of the services and the benefits that they get. All right, but you have a choice if you don't want to, you actually can be served just by Edison or just by pg e and we call it going back into bundled service. If you pay attention to this, when you do this, if you, if you, your choice is this five window, five month period, okay? You can really go back at any time, but the truth is, is there isn't any cost right now to go back. And let's say you chose, um, let's say you chose not to be served by us, okay? Um, and then three months or six months from, from now, you say, you know what, I think I wanna be served. You can come back. There's no cost to come back. We're not in the penalty box. Our role as a CCA is to be more transparent so that you can choose who actually provides your energy. The, you know, we think it's kind of special because you still maintain pg e or Edison and you have us also, and you get the benefit of participating in both. Okay, so if pg e or Edison has a program that you like, you can actually participate with us also. So let's say pg e well, pg e has an EV charging program. Okay, you can participate in theirs and you can participate in ours because you're served by both of us, we're partners. So that's an added benefit that mo why most of our customers say. All right, and so if you're not interested in receiving clean and renewable energy, um, you have the ability to unenroll in your bill because we've started service in January on your bill. In your bill, there's a call center number. There's a call center number for PG&E, but then the page that we show up in the bill has also our call center number. Or you can actually, you know, and at the end of the presentation, I'm giving you the call center number also. So you can actually call and say, I don't wish to be served. Our call center, we, we have um, weekly um, calls with them. And so we know what's going on and we hear and we learn and we want to make sure our call center understands and is re a really good service to our community members. And so you'll see that number show up. And, um, and then if, if you don't get your questions answered, you actually say, hey, I want to reach out to Susan. Give me your email and they'll let you find me. All right. That was a lot of information. All right. So now let's focus on NEM for a moment. Okay. Um, NEM enrollment begins January on your meter read date. All right. And all, and so here's what's unusual. Under npg e the utilities, when someone is a NEM customer and they move into CCA service, when the legislation was set up by the state of California, all customers were placed into CCA service. They wanted to make sure that the, that the CCAs could survive because our utilities have been around for a while. They're really big and very good at what they do, but they wanted to make sure that CCAs that could actually have that local voice and choose th that we could survive. So the customers come in and we as CCAs are really clear about saying, if you choose, you can go back to the utility and just be a bundled customer. It is your right and choice to do that, okay? I'm hoping that I get to chat with you and talk to you on a regular basis, but you do have that choice, okay? All right, so here's the current NEM billing structure, all right? Um, you're billed annually, right? So you watch everything. Most of you are what's called a net user, which means you use more than you generate. For the net generators, there's something called a net surplus compensation. For a net surplus compensation, that's actually you, that once a year you get paid for that for how much you overgenerate. Okay, 
and then your build for charges. So this is the existing structure that's been in place. What I wanna say is, is all the utilities across the state are currently moving customers into monthly billing. Okay, so that's what's uh, what's that's where we're going. Okay, is we're going into monthly billing. So to be served by us, you will see a month monthly bill. So what does that mean? I'll show you in just a moment. Okay, but I want to be really clear about the fact that almost all of our agriculture customers are already on monthly billing. Almost all of our commercial customers are all on monthly billing, and so we're seeing the move across the state for. For, to, 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 for the customers to be in monthly billing, in part for a couple of reasons. One is, is so that you don't get a big annual true up, okay? Because it's been a really stressful 18, more than 18 months this, in the last couple of years. And so that annual bill is hard. Um, you know, if it's a big bill for some customers and you're not paying attention to what shows up in your bill. And then the other is, is that to be, for you to be really aware and to be able to just quickly understand, let's say I went, away on vacation and I, you know, and, and I, um, I can see how much energy I use between vacation, not being home and being home. Or maybe I had my family move back in with me, my kids and their, and, and my grandkids move back in with me. And so then my bill goes up as a monthly biller, you get to be much more flexible and aware to understand how to address your energy quickly rather than having it go up six months or eight months and say, oh, criminy, now there's this huge bill. All right, so here's what happens, all right? On the monthly billing, there will be a minimum charge, okay? We'll show that, I'll show that in just a minute, okay? Um, because there's a minimum charge charged by the utility and that's for the distribution, that's for delivering and being tied to the grid. I cannot make that go away at this current day today, okay? Um, when if you overgenerate, then you can use your credit towards that, but you can't, but you will see up some, you will see a bill every month for that minimum charge. I think it's like 10 or $11, okay? If you overgenerate, there's no payment due other than the $10, okay? And the credit that you overgenerated actually stays in the bill and you can use it against next month's energy, all right? And so, so there's no payment if you overgenerate. If you undergenerate, what happens is, is you um, then pay the bill, but it's only a tiny portion of your annual bill. And the goal is to make it much easier for you to actually um, pay the bill, pay that uh, monthly usage and be aware if you can shift or change it, okay? So um, that's why the state is actually all moving really trying to move, not trying to move, they're moving into monthly billing. That's just where the state's going, okay? All right, I'm gonna take a breath for just a moment. So here, this slide is to show an example. Okay, and so when you're a, a what I call bundled service, when I'm served only by pg e or Edison or sdg e okay? All everything is bundled into the bill. And so you just see this bucket of numbers, okay? What most people don't understand is about Two thirds of your bill is actually for the PGE side, the distribution, transmission, the billing, and the meters. That's all the bucket that PGE collects. And then we collect the electricity, which is about one third of the bill. Okay. And as a um, NEM customer, you probably actually have a very tiny little electricity bill, probably less than a third of your bill. Okay. And so that this is how it shows up on the bill is you'll see us as a line item on that front page and you'll see what the cost is, okay? So I want you to be aware that we match the rate tariffs of PG&E and Edison. So remember when I talked about, you know, e A6 or, you know, whatever's on your bill, we match those. Edison or PG&E set them we match them. And so it's like, if it's six cents, then, then we discount off the six cents, okay? And so what will happen is, is this, when you see on this slide, it says electric community, electric gen generation, that's only the generation portions, we actually charge the as for the bill. And you'll see an additional page show up in the bill, okay? All right, so what happens is, is before you just saw the, on the left-hand side, you just saw here was the number, and now what happens is we start to show up, okay? So there you see the, the minimum statement, 
you know, the minimum delivery charges, um, $9.58 on this, 53 cents on this example. And so this is an example of what, how a bill, your single bill will continue to look, all right? And then we, we would be on the next page and you'll, this shows up on the top of the page so you can see. And on your bill, you know, you always see all this stuff show up. So what will happen is, is this is the, so you'll see on, let's go back for one second. On this bill, on the next page, when PG&E or Edison actually says, this is how much you, you used, right, for the month then what happens is, is you'll see that and then they will put a credit on the bill. Um, and so um, what it means is, is PG&E or Edison still does their bundled billing. They still do, they haven't, haven't paid for a new billing system. So they still do the same thing, but they show the bill and then they show a credit. Um, and so what will happen is, is you will, um, you'll see after you enroll with us, you'll see it and then there'll be how much is due. Okay, so now usually this would be under NEM when we run annual billing. This would start to grow and grow and grow. But now what will happen is, is you'll see like a number that says, okay, it's 20 to $27 in electricity for the month. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right, Jessica, you have a you had a question, and I'm going to stop for a moment so I can shift off the presentation for a moment. Um, Jessica said, in a previous webinar, I was told that solar companies should enroll in the resilient plan. I actually don't know what a resilient plan is. Um, so, if you want to, I'm going to actually write down. I've got your. I'll have your. I'm going to put your write your name down. So I can see if I can figure something out and con contact you directly, because I don't need you to put your email in the public box, right? So uh, I'm going to write your name down, and then we will follow up. I don't. I've never heard of resilient. I do know that the utilities, PG&E and Edison, have their own solar or renewable projects. I also know that if you participate in it. Um, they charge rates and then they add on top of that administration. So it's actually nowhere close to what you guys get with your own, own solar system. And it's, we are actually as a, with our 3C prime, which is our renewable is actually cheaper also than that most of the time. Um, so we happily will do cost savings analysis for you because I would prefer that you actually be served by the best rate and not just be, be served by us. There are some of my customers that actually were better served. There's a couple of rates where it actually makes sense to stay with the utility. And so I think that's really important is that's what we're here for is let me help me make a choice. Help me understand what my choices are so that it actually serves me and not serves Central Coast Community Energy or pg &E or anybody else, okay? All right. Um, Hope that helped, uh, Jessica. I didn't really answer your question. Um, do solar companies need to do anything else to enroll? The answer is no. All right. Um, all of you are coming in in January. And remember, the solar NEM is actually an agreement with the utility. It's not the rate tariff. Ah, Cindy. Okay. All right. So somebody gave me an answer to that. So we'll, we'll answer that first. Okay. Um, Cindy, who actually happens to work at, with, at one of the cities, Santa Barbara Clean Energy has something called a resilient option, which is they're 100% carbon free. So let's talk about that for just a moment, okay? Down in Edison, in, in unincorporated Santa Barbara, okay, we have, we have Edison serves unincorporated Santa Barbara South, Goleta Carpinteria, all right? And then Ventura and all the way into Los Angeles, okay? And it's, it's a huge territory down there. And so, but the city of Santa Barbara has crafted and created their own CCA. We partner with them. We don't, we don't, they don't do any energy delivery like us. Okay. So what I mean by partnering is, is we have a monthly call with them. Okay. Because the city of Santa Barbara is a CCA like us, but their territory is just this city of Santa Barbara, not the unincorporated area at all. So quite a few of my customers actually live in the city. And so they are their homes are served by Santa Barbara Clean Energy. And then they actually have a business, let's say in Goleta or unincorporated Santa Barbara, and then they're served by us. 
And so Santa Barbara Clean Energy has their own website. Um, they chose a 100% renewable option for their customers. There's nothing you have to do. Just like with us, when Santa Barbara started their, um, they, their service, they actually started, I think, first with commercial and then go to residential. I may be wrong, but usually what happens is residential is the biggest bucket of customers. And so they're serving one set of customers and they're bringing the other customers in. And so if you live in the city of Santa Barbara, this presentation actually has nothing to do with you. Um, I'd go find their website and look or look at your bill because I know they'd be serving you and look at the number on the bill and you could call them. Alilia works and she helps run that program. So we meet and have a call with them on a monthly basis because we want to make sure all the customers are know where who they're served by and how they can get information. Thanks, Cindy. Appreciate the information. And so as per the per Jessica's question, do solar companies need to do anything special? No, because when a CCA starts, it's approved by the state, okay? And then it takes a year before service is allowed to begin. That, that means that the CCA goes out and actually collects um, um, the, you know, gets the power, procures the power so that when enrollment starts, then we have power to serve our customers, okay? Um, oh, thanks, Jessica. Thanks for the clarification. So yay, you're one of our customers, appreciate it. And thank you, Cindy, for the website. So if any of you are in the city, the website is actually in the chat box, um, sbcleanenergy.com. And so feel free to go and look there too. When you call our call center, um, and if they can't find you, what's one of the first questions they ask is, are you in the city or are you are in unincorporated? So we actually can make sure you get served. And if you happen to be in the city, then we make sure you get their phone number and their email address and such. So. That was a lot of information. All right, um, as I said earlier, your NEM agreement with PG&E or Edison is not changing, okay? You got a permission to operate with your utility that stays in place, okay? And so you may be an early, early, early adopter under NEM 1.0. Most people don't know what that is unless you're a NEM customer or NEM 2.0, okay? And so um, you, can, you can keep your legacy rates. Um, some of the NEM 1.0 customers were on tier and they still are continuing to keep their tiers. We honor that, okay? Then the NSC, which is in, we have lots of acronyms in this. Uh, NSC is actually net surplus compensation, also continues for customers who overgenerate. Um, and so for this year, our NSC is halfway between retail and wholesale. Our goal as a CCA is always to provide a higher NSC for our customers so they get a little more money, which is cool, um, than they would with a utility and actually charge less rates than uh, the utilities. All right, so here's the goal of the shift to monthly billing um, to eliminate the large true ups, to actually for you to be able to really be aware of the energy usage and make quick changes if you want to. And also to understand that if, you have ish, if you're getting credit balances that you actually can use them, okay, for the next month's energy bill and then adding flexibility for the credits. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So what ca changes can you expect? You still get a single bill, no new extra charges on the bill. So when you see on the PG&E or Edison page, how much kilowatts you used, peak, off peak, or super off peak, then you go to the next page, you see the same thing on our page, peak, off peak and super off peak, same kilowatt usage. You can play with those two pages and see the difference in the pricing. And, and so that's our, way of being transparent of saying, this is the bucket of electricity that you spend. And then all this other stuff is actually the other stuff that um, costs the utilities to actually serve their customers. So you still get one bill, okay? Um, and PG&E's portion of the bill is for what's called, or Edison's portion is called T&D, transmission and generation or transmission and distribute, whoops, sorry, transmission and distribution, T&D. And we're for generation, all right? And then also to let you know that um, we have strict privacy rules, just like the IOUs. We um, share data. So we actually you know, know what the energy usage is, what the cost is, where our customers live, but very strict privacy rules. Um, and we, are, we adhere to that same level, high level of data privacy. It's very important to us. And so here's the information. 
Uh, we've been talking about this for a bit. All right, here's the website at the bottom. So let me snap, snick this in the chat box. Okay. Um, I'm going to actually put two in the chat box. Uh oh, I don't. Oh, there it is. Okay, so this is the website for the NEM customers. And if you want to learn more about energy itself, we also have for our website we actually have the clean energy so that there's more information there too. All right. Okay, um, customers, this is to me is super important, especially if, uh, based upon the last two years. Customers enrolled, let's say medical baseline, care or FIRA or the LIHE programs or such. Um, we keep the same programs. We do not administer the programs. They're done through the utility. So if you, um, are a care or if you're a customer, or if you are a medical baseline customer, that's established through PGE or Edison. So again, when you have your bill, you have a PGE page with a call number, and then you'll we on our bill, you'll see our call center number. Please pay attention to this and share this information with your neighbors and your family and such, because there are really good discounts um, if you qualify that are really important at this time. And so, our, you know, it's important to know the medical baseline customers because as the, you know, we have climate change and the, the you know, we have issues with the, the grid and, you know, energy's on and off and that kind of stuff. There really is an awareness about our medical baseline customers and making sure that they're served. Okay. So you do not apply for, with us for these programs. You apply with your, your, um, with your utility through their customer service center number or through their website. So here is the example where you see PG&E Care Fira. That is the website uh, there. And so you can actually get reduction based upon your income, okay? You can actually get reduction on your bills. And then the other is, is you may qualify for you know, energy savings programs or the medical baseline. And that at the bottom is PG&E. And so if you're an Edison customer, you go to the Edison webpage and you type in medical baseline and you get taken to the medical baseline. So the utilities are very good. We all have lots of web, page, web pages, at, you know, in, in our web, um, lot, lots of pages in our web site, I guess you would say. Um, but we try to make the information easy to get to. Um, so please, if you're eligible for something, even just pick up the phone and call and ask if you're eligible. Um, you might be, we don't know. All right, so how do we actually, so I talked about the revenue. 90% um, of our budget is actually power procurement. 10% of our budget is, for, uh, is the bucket that's left. We're small and lean. We have less than 40 employees. We have 4% of our budget goes into actually energy programs, which is on the screen. And so we make sure that the revenue that is created comes back into the local community. So um, let me pop in another little blurb in the web box, okay? This is the web, web, this is the energy programs overall page, first of all, okay? And then we have a whole bunch of programs under that. And so let's say you're interested in a EV charger, okay? Let's say you're, you're um, you know, you, we're doing a program right now called Electrify Your Ride. And it's both for panel upgrades and for vehicles also. Um, so it's not just the actual car itself. It's actually the stuff that you need to do to actually be able to have lease or rent the car, lease or own the car. And so we're really proud of those programs. So this is where the money, the revenue comes back into to create programs that then the cities, businesses, and our residents use. All right. So here's an example of the Electrify Your Ride. So if you actually want an e-bike, if you're served by us, which you will be in your meter rebate in January, you actually can get a electric bike or electric motorcycle. We have our cities talking to us about electric motorcycles because they want to start to electrify their police force, which we, you know, it's like you learn all sorts of stuff in this business. Um, and so there's four buckets in this program. And the email address again is at the bottom, but we will actually drop it in the box again one more time for you guys. Okay. We're really proud of this program. 
because it's a it's four different rebates and you as a customer get to choose how you do it. So maybe you want an e-bike first and then maybe you want to go maybe then you're going to go for the the you know the vehicle in your garage but then you realize your panel's too small so you know you're going to have to do the panel and so you get to choose these four buckets in any order that's important to you. And so that's what's our goal is to create programs that actually get used and the money goes out to the community and that actually makes us happy. As of this program, which just opened in November, we currently have 500 applications that we're processing for electric vehicles so far. So we're really, really proud of that. Okay, okay. one more, let's go one. Okay, another idea is if you're a business, okay, and you don't have to be a nonprofit business, we have an electrification and innovation grant. And so, one more time, I'm going to sneak a little more information in the inbox, right? And this is actually for innovative ideas, okay? And it's up to $100,000. This is the money that, you know, is spent, that, that's been spent on your electric bill comes back into programs that come back into the community. And so we're really proud of this individual grants. This closes February 7th. So go take a look at the link that I just put in the chat box and actually um, take a look at the information. You may be a small business who has an idea, okay? Or you may um, have a, you or your family member works works for a, you know, workforce education and training place or a CBO, community-based organization. And so we really want local um, ap applicants. We're not looking for somebody in New York to apply for this program. We really want to, this money to be spent locally. So please submit a completed application. And I'm looking forward to some great ideas. How to stay connected. So I did say that I would sneak in there. It says 2021 enrollment because we're, I didn't change that. I should fix that. Now 2222 enrollment. Um, that's the phone number. That's our email address and such. And we have a call center. So feel free to reach out to them, okay? They're, they actually are really good. I like talking to them. All right, now we're in the Q&A session. I have a few examples of some uh, uh, NEM slides, but I actually want to get into the Q&A session rather than get kind of distracted in the um, 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 the examples. Because the truth is, is everybody's bill is specific to their system and, and their rate tariff and such. And so um, what I'd like to do is, um, so I'm going to go into the Q&A for a moment. I've got a couple of questions put in the Q&A. So, Let's go into Q&A session. Feel free to type some stuff in the chat box, or if you want, Robert was um, proactive and stuck some stuff in the Q&A, so I will try and um, be in both places at once, okay? All right, um, he says, can I expand on distribution charges? Okay, so, so like I said before, there's, I call it, there's like three buckets um, in your bundled bill. But okay, that currently, if I if not if you're not receiving service from us, you get a bundled bill. Everything's bundled in one bucket. Okay, in that bill is number one, T and D transmission and distribution. So transmission and distribution is the grid to get everything moving around California to your house. Okay, everybody's electrons get put into the grid and shipped around by ISO and the utilities. Okay, utilities manage the grid. We don't manage the grid. We don't charge for the grid. So that's called T and D. The second buck is, is the fees. So if you're actually looking at your bill, flip over page one of the bill and actually on the back of the bill, they usually have all the fees. And so usually at least two or three cents of your bill per kilowatt hour is the fees, the mandated fees that all of you pay for the wildlife, for the power shutoff stuff, for, I mean, it's just this whole bucket of stuff. And that, you know, your climate credit is, is the positive side on that bucket, okay? And so there's all that stuff on that page. Most people never even see that. Then on the, then on the next page, you actually see the bundled where it's like, how much did you use? At what time of the day and time of use did you use it, okay? And how much? What I wanna say is to be really aware that the, across the state, the utilities are moving because they manage, again, the, the grid. They're moving the customers and our residential customers in the next few months are all moving into time of use. That's where you really pay attention because if you're using energy at the most expensive time of the day, the peak, 
then it's, it's more expensive. And so that's where you become aware of your time of use. All right. Um, so that's the third bucket. And that is the electricity bucket. Okay. About one third of the bill. And so the fees are charged based upon how much electricity you use. And then the, the distribution, the TND is charged based, usually based upon how much you, kilowatt you use. And so they're all like, you know, pennies or percentages of what we call kilowatt hours. Okay. And each utility, Edison has different rates and different fees and different monthly, you know, minimum charge than PG&E. Each utility does their own filings with the California Public Utilities Commission for what their rates are going to be. And they're set by the each utility based upon their number of customers and how much usage and all that kind of stuff. They're not set by us. Okay. And so Bob asked a second question. He said, do, um, okay. So he said, it's the clarification question. So if you're an overproducer, do you get charged um, or, or an underproducer? So let's get really clear on that piece. Because I'm only the electricity portion of your bill, you're gonna get a, if you overproduce, you're still gonna pay that minimum charge $10 because you're not paying me, you're paying the utility for the right to actually get the electrons delivered to your house. That's part of the distribution, okay? I can't make that go, that minimum go away. If you're an underproducer, which means you pull from the grid and you always spend a little bit more than the $10, you're gonna pay the $10 minimum charge, which is for the use of the grid, and then you're gonna pay for the electricity usage, okay? And so um, the electricity usage comes to me, PG&E gets to keep the $10. Now here's what happens. At the end of this year, because remember we're only having, we're finishing our enrollments. This is kind of like the last enrollment in this territory. And so this is the only time we're gonna do this with NEM customers because you guys are so aware of how you use energy. At the end of this year, you're still gonna get your annual true up with utilities. You're gonna, so, what I mean is, is, you're always, is, is as a commercial customer, you're gonna get that wonderful black and white bill that tells you all that stuff, bazillion pages. That's on the commercial side. On the residential, you're gonna get that page in the bill that says, here's your true up, okay? And at that point in time, all right, that's when you see how much you've paid the $10 and the $10 and the $10. At the end of the year in December, we do our gen true up, okay? and it will happen every year. If you overgenerate, overproduce, you're gonna be able to use that overproduction then going forward in January and whatever for both your electricity and your PG&E bill, okay? Because it's a whole bucket. Or you can call, or you can call the call center and say, if you're over $200 as an individual, you can say, send me a check and give me the money. So that big credit as an overgenerator can be used next year, okay, towards both sides of the bill, but they won't, but PG&E won't let us do it right now. Um, I just can't, it's just not allowed, okay? If I underproduce, I'm gonna, then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna pay my monthly, which I owe anyway, and then I'm gonna pay that little piece, that one twelfth of the big bill, okay? And so people, some people have said, well, you know, I'm gonna lose here and lose here. I'm like, no, no. You're still under the same period. The only difference is you're getting this one-time gen true up because it's required by the utility so that all the records start clear and clean with them for the, for the, for the information. So that's why this is happening, okay? Um, we actually looked at all of our NEM customers, about 45,000 of you across the territory, and we worked to figure out would there be a month that would be the best time to actually do this. And the truth is, is all of you are spread evenly across the 12 months. And so we did it at the beginning of the year just to make it as clean and clear as possible, knowing that in December, you can say, if you're an overgenerator, you can say, send me my check and collect your Christmas money. I hope that's cl clear enough because I know this is like really detailed information. So I appreciate the question, Rob, Bob. All right, so another question. Uh, Jessica says, does, do we purchase RECs from the market? Okay, and the answer is no. Great question, thank you for asking. We used to, when we first started, and a lot, most of the CCAs do purchase RECs, okay? And our board decided that that was kind of like a, 
you know, like a card game that you really didn't purchase the energy, but you kind of purchased the renewable, but it was being put somewhere else. And so um, our board voted no. So when you look at our PCL, our power content label, the renewable that you see there, especially the renewable in the 100% in the 3C prime is 100% renewable that we buy and we don't buy the RECs, we know where it's coming from. So we're really proud of that. Um, we we're going, you know, we right now our PCL is pretty close to what the utilities look like, but our contracts are in place. So in the next couple of years, our PCL number is going to keep going up, which to hit the 60%. And then our goal in 2030 is that everyone's going to have renewable. That's really where we're aiming is, is that I'll give an example. When California decided that the utilities were to have a renewable product, contracts were purchased at 200 to $250 a kilowatt, massive amount of money for projects because it was so new. And because of that volume and the, the, the intent of both the utilities in renewables and the, the NEM programs with the utilities, you guys changed the market. And currently now you can buy contracts well, I can't buy contracts, but you, you could buy before Texas hit contracts on the market for like $20 a kilowatt. That's a huge difference between what it used to be. Okay. So that allows CCAs like us to purchase renewable energy. Okay. At really competitive rates, like our regular energy our you know, and put it into our mix. And so our goal is by 2030 is that everything that we purchase in the market is actually renewable so that everybody from somebody who can't afford to actually have a solar system on their house or their apartment, let's say they rent, okay, they actually could, their, their CCE energy will actually be 100% renewable rather than even paying the adder. So our hope is, is that the adder goes away over time by 2030 and all of us are in the same bucket and we're really proud to be the first, well, another CCA is um, trying to get ahead of us, but we're really proud of that. So thanks, Jessica, for that question. Um, and I'm really proud of the response too, because it's like, I, I'm pleased to be able to work at a place like this. All right, so Bob, you have another question. Um, okay, so, so the answer is, if your monthly bill is around the seventh of the month, is it gonna change? The answer is no. Remember, pg e and Edison still do the billing. So what happens is, remember, your NEM is just an agreement, a permission to operate agreement. It's actually not your meter and rate tariff. So if your rate is, if your meter is read on the sixth of the month, okay, or the seventh of the month, then what happens is usually three to five days later or so, utility issues the bill. You can always actually tell when your meter read date is. If you look at your bill, because I've been looking at a customer's bill, and you can see um, at the top of the bill, it says, December 1st to December 28th. And you're like, why didn't they do it for the whole month? Well, I don't know. I don't do the billing, but you'll be able to see when your monthly billing is actually when your meter is read. Um, so it's an excellent question. Your, your bills don't change. Your meters don't change. If let's say for a new customer, let's say you are not an M customer and, you are, and you're getting your solar put on the house and you're waiting for your permission to operate. Most of the time when you get a PTO, um, the utility actually issues you a new meter number. Why? I don't know. But then you get, so you look at your bill and you actually see a new meter number show up, but you usually have the same account number. So um, you have an account number and then you have a meter number. All right. It's called actually a service agreement ID number. All right. And so we keep to those same numbers so that actually when a customer is talking to us or talking to PG&E or, or talking to Edison customer service, we actually can look at the same information. Um, all right. So, okay. So Rob, uh, Bob, uh, so if you're currently on tiered, which means you're probably an M1.0, is there a sunset clause? Um, the answer is, is not today. Okay. Um, but Depends on which utility. I've heard that in Edison territory that they already asked for a 10 year uh, sunset uh, on the on the on the NEM existing NEM legacy rates. So, but I don't know. Um, remember, I'm not um, that your NEM agreement is with the utility, not with me. Okay. 
And so that's the th piece I can't get in the middle of. I know what you're asking me because I actually have a NEM 1.0 in my own house. Um, and my boss actually has a NEM 1.0, but she's under, I'm under tiered um, and she is actually under time of use. And so it's fascinating how we all get to choose what's best for us, okay? And so I do know that there's conversations occurring at the commission level, the CPUC, California Public Utility Commission. Um, we pay attention to it. We're very aware of what's going on. Um, but remember our NEM agreements, your NEM agreements are with the utility. And our goal is actually to, to understand what rate you're on because I have a customer here that I've been working on who's actually a NEM customer. They're at a, a water district down in, actually down by Goleta. And um, they, um, but then they have, each meter has its own rate. And the rate is like an E19S or something like that. So each meter has its own rate tariff depending on its usage. So um, like I said, you guys ask, I gave you probably a lot more information than you really wanted to know, um, but, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to answer your questions. If you have questions about um, you know, legacy rates, what I would do first is, is I would actually call, because your rates are set by uh, pg e or Edison, I'd call their call center and talk to them, okay? Their call center is aware of what's going on. And um, if you have any other questions, um, you can call our call center and find me, all right? Now it is 7.05, so you guys have all been patient with me. Um, and let me sneak the presentation back. Hang on one second, let me see if I can do that. All right, here we go. All right, so there's the call center number and such. Um, tomorrow or the next day, I'm gonna take and turn the PDF into, a, a turn the presentation into a PDF and share it out. Um, I appreciate you participating today and taking the time and staying with us. Are there any more questions? All right. All right, I think, whoop. All right, last one. Under what circumstances are we better off staying with Edison? See, I tell you, you guys always ask the hardest questions. Um, okay, so I'll give an example. I don't know what your rate is, and I don't know what your service is, and I don't know your usages, so I can't answer it for you, but I'm gonna answer for one of my commercial customers. I have a very large oil and gas commercial, they, they down in unincorporated Santa Barbara, oil and gas company. And they're on a rate that is very, very competitive. It's actually Edison. I feel that Edison is a better choice than us. Um, and here's why because the rates are so tight between us and them. Because remember, we take the rate, we discount it. And so that rate is so competitive and their volume, I mean, this customer is paying a million dollars a month in energy bills, okay? And so it, at that point in time, and they don't get any benefit from us, um, from our energy programs. They don't have an office, you know, they work out of a trailer or they work off an oil rig. And so they don't have a location. And so they actually can't, participate in our programs. They can't get EV chargers or chargers at work or, you know, they'd be putting a charger next to the trailer, things like that. And so I had had, I had six conversations with this customer. He actually has services in pg e territory. And he was, when he came into service with us a year and a half ago up there, I'm his key rep and I kept him. He was very, very uncomfortable. And he's seen that he's been able to save with us. And under PG&E. Edison rates are much tighter and much more competitive. And so, from a, so for this customer, it makes sense for him to actually, because he's probably going to close down some of his sites, it makes sense just for him to stay local. I know that if I picked up the phone and asked him to come with me, he would have. I also know that he, that it was really important that, that um, he and I have transparent conversation and to work out what's best to serve him. And so, we felt that it might be better for this time period. And so what happens is, is if you stay, he, as he stayed with Edison, okay, for this period, in six months, he asked me to call him back. 
And at that point in time, he and I will then do a cost analysis and take a look at rates and see what's going on. Because um, then we'll take a look and see what the better choice is. And by then he'll have made some decisions on a couple of his other you know, sites. And so then he said, Susan, I appreciate it. People don't normally do this and I appreciate it. And so we're building a relationship. And so in what circumstance are you better off staying? You get to choose, Bob, not me. You get to figure out and if you need a cost analysis done, then you call the call center and ask, ask, and they kick it over to our team. I'm part of the key accounts team. And so please feel free that we are of service to you. Okay. That's what we're here for. And so if you have the ability, if you're thinking about, if you work in a city, this is some, you know, talk to the city about having them put in some charging or you're just talking to another city in, in the middle of the central coast um, about some heavy duty trucks for them that are electrical. So great questions. You guys always have the hardest questions. All right. And I hope I answered them. Um, you feel comfortable. I appreciate you taking the time to be. I'm going to actually stop the recording and look forward to an email. It'll come from me and it'll have the PDF and stuff. And so you'll know how to find me. Cindy, thank you for attending tonight. I appreciate it, everyone, for your time. Have a great night. Goodbye.